Harder, better, faster, stronger, bigger. In modern society, we're used to more being a good thing. But in economics, bigger isn't always better. Sometimes it isn't even actually bigger. Take Zimbabwe, for example. In 2016, Zimbabwe's GDP was 20.5 billion Zim dollars, or Zollers. Then, just four years later, in 2020, its GDP had risen over 6,000% to 1.4 trillion Zollers, equivalent to nearly 27 billion US dollars. According to those numbers, it seems like Zimbabwe's economy was working harder, better, faster, and stronger. But the real story isn't quite so straightforward. During those four years, Zimbabwe experienced a bout of hyperinflation, or a rapid increase in prices. And while prices shot up exponentially, production actually declined. And we know in economics, a lot comes back to production. More production means more jobs, means more money for everyone. So the situation in Zimbabwe was not good. This hyperinflation made Zimbabwe's GDP humongous compared to actual aggregate production. And it doesn't take a genius to see that, in this case, GDP as we know it isn't actually an accurate measure of economic growth. Luckily for economists, there's a better way. Hi, I'm Matt Sofa, and this is Study Hall Macroeconomics. The GDP we've been talking about so far in this course is nominal GDP, or the total value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given time period, calculated with the prices of the year it was produced. And it's definitely helpful a lot of the time. For one, it's really easy to calculate using the formula C plus I plus G plus NX. We also need to use nominal GDP when comparing GDP with other measures like national debt. That's because nominal GDP uses nominal values, the market value of goods or services with price levels defined at the time of production. Basically, a box of Pop-Tarts baked, frosted, and packaged in that shiny silver wrapping in 2023 has a nominal value of whatever the going price for a box of Pop-Tarts was that year. Let's say six bucks. But if the price of this delectable breakfast pastry were to skyrocket in 2024 to a whopping $10 a box, Pop-Tart GDP in 2024 would increase, even if the exact same amount of Pop-Tarts were being produced. This means that nominal GDP totally ignores the effects of inflation, or an across-the-board increase in price and decrease in purchasing power. We'll get into inflation more later, but the bottom line is, it can make nominal GDP numbers seem a little misleading. So it looks like Pop-Tart production is way up, when in fact it's another variable, price, that's climbed. To get more specific, we have to add a little more math to account for inflation and give us real GDP. The total value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time, calculated using the prices of a base year to remove the effects of price changes like inflation. By using the prices of a base year, we can remove the variable inflation and find the real increase or decrease in production. This might feel a little confusing. Luckily, we've got a brief hypothetical to help explain this sometimes tricky concept. Imagine a picturesque country nestled snugly between France and Italy and ruled by a friendly queen, Julie Andrews. Genovia. The Genovian economy is small and relies on the production of just two goods, pears and olive oil. If Genovia produced 70 million pounds of pears that sold for five Genovian francs per pound in 2023 and 90 million pounds selling at six Genovian francs per pound in 2024, you'd have an increase in both production and price. Same for olive oil. Let's say Genovia produced and sold 5 million gallons of olive oil for 100 Genovian francs per gallon in 2023 and 8 million in 2024, selling for 110 Genovian francs per gallon. All of that would make Genovia's nominal GDP in 2023 850 million Genovian francs, which then rises to 1.4 billion in 2024, a huge increase. But that isn't the whole story, because we know production didn't actually rise all that much between the years. So to get a much more accurate picture of Genovia's economic health and account for higher prices, we should calculate real GDP instead. To do this, we select a base year, in this case, 2023, meaning we'll use 2023 prices for both years we're calculating. That would change those prices in 2024 from nominal values to real values, or the market value using a common price level. Since we're using it as our base year, the real GDP for 2023 is going to be the same as the nominal GDP, 850 million Genovian francs. 
That's the easy part. Then we use the 2023 prices to calculate the real GDP for Genovia in 2024, and things start to look a little different. We'll multiply our 2024 quantity of 90 million pounds of pears by five Genovian francs instead of six, and eight million gallons of olive oil by 100 Genovian francs instead of 110, because those are the prices from our base year. This makes sure we're evaluating production on an even scale from year to year, making the real 2024 GDP for Genovia about 1.25 billion Genovian francs, which is still some pretty impressive growth, but less dramatic than before. So real GDP can do a lot to give us a more specific picture of economic growth when we compare production year to year. And while the rates of change are usually less than with nominal GDP because inflation is usually positive, they're still important indicators of economic health. That increase Genovia experienced? Nothing to shake a stick at. Sustained periods of increasing real GDP, like what's going on in Genovia, are known as expansions because production and the economy are growing, or expanding. One commonly referenced period of expansion here in the US took place after the end of World War II. People were sick of wartime rationing, flush with savings, and eager to start spending. Additionally, factories that had been all geared up for wartime manufacturing were suddenly ready to crank out consumer goods instead. That meant more production, more spending, and more economic prosperity, even leading to a baby boom as people assessed the rosy economic conditions. On the flip, Sustained periods when national production decreases and real GDP declines are called recessions. You might remember the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009. Thanks to a perfect storm of some questionable dealings in the US housing market and other related financial markets, many homeowners were suddenly unable to pay their mortgages. To make matters worse, the houses they'd spent their life savings on were suddenly worth way less than they'd paid. People stopped spending, Businesses made huge layoffs and cut production, and real GDP declined by about 4.3%. If an economy is healthy and chugging along as we'd expect, like Genovia's, we can expect the real GDP of years prior to the base year to be slightly higher than their nominal GDP, and the real GDP of years after that base year to be slightly lower. So real GDP solves the issue of inflated prices skewing the data, which can lead to an inaccurate picture of a country's economic health. But the fun doesn't stop there. We can also use real GDP and nominal GDP to calculate an average measure of price increases, known as the GDP deflator. The GDP deflator is an index that measures the overall change in the price of GDP-included goods over time. If it increases, that indicates inflation. If it decreases, that means deflation. We can find that deflator by dividing our nominal GDP by real GDP for that same year and multiplying by 100. So the 2024 GDP deflator for Genovia would be 1.4 billion Genovian francs. The nominal GDP for 2024 divided by 1.25 billion Genovian francs, the real GDP adjusted for inflation times 100, equaling about 112. Any GDP deflator that comes out to above 100 means that the country in question has experienced some inflation and increase in price compared to the base year. Of course, Genovia isn't the only country experiencing some inflation. To find the GDP deflator for the US for the year 2023, we could take the nominal GDP, about $27.36 trillion, and divide it by the real GDP of the same year, $22.38 trillion. Then we multiply by 100 to get the GDP deflator rounded to 122. That means goods were about 22% pricier than the base year, in this case, 2017. An increase in the price of something like Pop-Tarts might not seem like a big deal, it might not even make a huge difference when looking at a country's whole GDP. But when that price increase comes across all breakfast foods, or all goods in general, things start to feel pretty significant. Even though real GDP and the GDP deflator can't precisely capture the agony of foregoing your favorite toaster pastry, they could tell a lot about inflation and economic production in general. We know economists are all about examining patterns over time, and these are two more tools they can use to track how prices change as the years turn over. Real GDP can give us a much clearer picture of the actual economic health of a country, particularly compared to nominal GDP. Were we to calculate Zimbabwe's real GDP in 2020, factoring in those whopping inflation levels, we'd come out closer to 21.5 billion US dollars, nearly 7 billion less than nominal GDP, and much more indicative of what's actually going on in the country, and for the people who live there. If the whole point of economics is to make sense of the chaos of our world, be it spiking Pop-Tart prices or inflation disrupting an entire country's economy, 
then real GDP and the GDP deflator are important resources to understanding both changing prices over time and a country's overall economic health. But these real GDP and the GDP deflator can only do so much to tell us about the economic prosperity, not only of a whole country, but to the people who live there. To really understand what these numbers mean for consumers, we have to look even closer at how things like population play into all this. And that's a job for yet another measurement, GDP per capita. If you're enjoying this series and are interested in taking the full study hall macroeconomics course and earning college credit from ASU, check out gostudyhall.com or click on the button to learn more. And if you wanna help us out, give this video a like, comment, and uh, smash that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time.